Hello creative friends! Welcome back to another journal spread. Today I'm going to start off a little differently and tell you about my gesso. In a previous video I expressed some frustration at trying to use watercolor on a gessoed page because it's non-porous and it doesn't absorb water so you don't really get that watercolor effect from the paints. But in the comments of that video I was informed that there is a watercolor ground that allows for watercolor paints on smooth paper so it like absorbs the paint and then it looks the way watercolor should look. So of course I had to google that because how cool is that? So big thanks and shout out to Art by Patrick Petruccello for that info. By the way he has some very cool art on his channel so go check it out. So I also learned that you can make your own watercolor ground by adding baking soda to gesso and big thank you to Debbie Springer for that tip. The instructions I saw were to add one to two teaspoons to your gesso, but they didn't say how much gesso, so I just kind of dumped out some baking soda and added gesso to it. It ended up being about four parts baking soda to five parts gesso, so we'll see how that goes. And the gesso that I used is just, you know, artist loft, plain old white gesso. I really like this. Um, I like the container. Because I can just open it and dip my brush into it and not have to squeeze it out onto a surface. So I like this gesso a lot. Um, since I'm talking and not really arting right now, I do want to express my deep appreciation for everybody who subscribes to my channel and everyone who leaves informative, kind, and supportive comments. You all mean so much to me, I can't even tell you. And a special thanks to Coco Lotes for continually encouraging me from the very beginning. I appreciate you. All of you are so great. I love you. Okay, let's make some art. This is my color palette for today, which honestly I kind of think is a little bit hideous. But um, we'll, we'll see what we can make with this. We're, we're going to end up making something cool, I'm pretty sure. So these are the colors that I picked out, and these are Gansai Tambi watercolors. Um, what do we have here? Uh, it doesn't say on the back what the color is. It says in the box. This one I know is a yellow ochre. This one is cadmium scarlet. This is rose matter deep, which is kind of a pinky color. And this is ultramarine blue. So we'll see what we can make with that. The black, I'm just going to come in with some ink later because otherwise, with, if I do it with watercolor, it's going to end up being pretty muddy and messy. So let's get some water on here. And away we go. So I've got my water brush here. I really need to get some actual watercolor brushes because really all I have are water brushes. I've got it on my Amazon wish list right now. Um, I kind of been garage sailing a bit hard this spring and summer, so you know the funds are just not there. But I do have plans for some decent watercolor brushes. I saw on Facebook like an ad came through my Facebook feed. Or something called Grabe, I want to say it is, G-R-A-B-I-E, watercolor brushes, and they look fantastic. Um, a little bit pricey, but I think all watercolor brushes are. So eventually I'm going to get a set of those, and I'll do a review on them, let you know how they are. But for now I'm just using my water brush. This came free with a set of, what did it come with? Gelatos, I think. Yeah, I think it was with a set of gelatos. I don't really use brushes a whole lot with gelatos, but you know, I use them with the with the watercolor paints and so they work pretty good. I have to say I'm really liking how this baking soda gesso absorbs the paint. Like it's actually doing what it's supposed to. I got blooms in here. Like it's not just sitting on top of the paper like with regular gesso. This is fantastic. Honestly, I might just use this all the time instead of regular gesso because honestly, it just it grabs the paint so well. 
and everything stays where I put it and it's not running all over the place. It's awesome. And later on when I put my words on here, the glue will actually stick to this gesso. I've been having so much problem gluing things on lately because my journal is getting pretty thick and it's pretty warped and um, no computer, I'm not going to update my software right now. I'm in the middle of something. Sorry. Um, train of thought just derailed. What was I saying? Oh, I had a hard time gluing stuff down on my pages because they were pretty warped. And uh, some of these pages are kind of glossy underneath. And with the acrylic paints that I've been using, it's the glue just doesn't want to stick and I have to hold it down for a really long time. But when I glued over this spread, it just stuck like magic, you know, like glue how is, like how glue is supposed to work. Imagine that. So, you know, I might just throw some baking soda in with my gesso and use it like all the time. Okay, so here I'm picking up some of the pink paint, um, the Rose Matter Deep, because when I looked at my color card, the pink was too pink. It needed to be not really a mauve kind of color. I'm not really sure what color that was supposed to be, but I just absorbed, you know, some of the color with my paper towel and it's definitely a lot better. And I really did kind of want a softer color for the background anyway, um, just because we're going to put stuff over the top. Of course, you have to dry the pages really well before you draw over them because if you put ink over top of wet watercolor paper, it's the ink's just going to run. When I dry my pages, I do tend to dry them um, from both sides because it just helps them dry a lot better and make sure that the water is completely gone and not just being held in the kind of deeper layers of the paper. This is just an acrylic marker, and I'm just making marks. I know a lot of artists just do all kinds of mark making, and they have like so many different kinds of marks. I kind of have a hard time coming up with marks sometimes. I tend to either do lines or circles. I don't know. I really should practice making marks more often just so I have a better variety of marks to choose from. And here I decided to go in the opposite direction. Because I think if you make everything in the same direction, it's not as interesting. Kind of helps to break up the movement of your eyes. Like if everything just went from, you know, left to right, straight across, then that's how your eyes would go. And wouldn't stay on the page. So by adding some things that are vertical and some things that are horizontal, you kind of move around a little bit more on the page instead of moving off the page. And these are just spirals. I really like the way the spirals turned out actually. The color of the marker was really good. It was pretty close to the watercolor paints, but still enough where you could differentiate between the two. I went to use an orange, and I did not have an orange in that set that was orange enough. They were all pretty light, and I wanted to go a little darker with the marker than with the watercolor paint. So I got out my Posca for this particular orange. And I'm just doing circles. I really like the look of circles, but I kind of hate drawing circles because I feel like I'm either not doing enough variation in the size or I have too many big ones or small ones next to each other. I don't know what it is about the circles, but they kind of stress me out to draw them, which sounds really weird because they're just circles. But I want to make sure they're interesting enough and not just, oh, look, a whole bunch of same size circles. And 
I do like how the circles look when it's done, which is why I keep doing the circles. But to be honest with you, I like the spirals a lot better. And I think I might use spirals more often. It was pretty cool that I had the same sort of pinky color in my markers. It's not really one you find a whole lot, I don't think. And no, none of my Posca ones are this color. I have a couple purples and a couple of pinks, but not anything that's in between like this. And I'm just doing squigglies, and some of the squigglies I'm doing kind of an outline rather than just a single line, just for interest. I've got all my marks made and now I'm going to take a stencil and stencil over the top and I'm going to do some white and you can see I don't really clean my <laughs> I don't really clean my paint bottles before I close them <laughs> which is not a good idea because after I get done with white I'm going to do some blue and when I opened it I had a hard time opening it and it got everywhere <laughs> It was a huge mess, so, you know, always clean your paint bottles before you close them. That's your PSA for the day. I'm using a baby wipe and white paint, and mm, it didn't really turn out how I wanted it to. First of all, the baby wipe kind of moves some of the watercolor paints around underneath there. And because, you know, it's wet, it kind of smudged the paint, so it wasn't a real clean impression with the stencil. It's not terrible, and it's fine because it's just background, but it wasn't really what I had wanted. I did want something a little crisper. I had originally chosen the baby white because I didn't want the white to be really white. I wanted a little bit faded, but it didn't turn out exactly what I wanted. So I decided to be done with the white and abandon that idea. So I'm going to take this other stencil and some blue paint, and I'm going to try with just a dry paper towel. And there's the blue when I opened it, it got everywhere. <laughs> My hands were covered in blue. I had to pause the video and go wash up. It was sad. So I'm using the dry paper towel, but unfortunately it's not getting into the little cutouts of the stencil. And that was getting very frustrating. So I abandoned the paper towel and I grabbed a brush. This is just a cheap acrylic brush. I think it came in a kid's paint set, actually. And it worked really well to get into all the little tiny cutout shapes. Someday I might get some sponges. But I don't know. I mean, the brush worked pretty well. I might use the brush more often. At least for the little stencils. The bigger ones I should probably get a sponge for. So here I got the nice, clean, crisp lines that I was looking for. And of course, it's always important to dry your paint before you go on to the next step. I cannot tell you how many times I've dragged my hand through some wet paint and smeared it everywhere. Ugh. So now we're going to draw. I decided to make cone flowers in all of the non-blue spaces. And this is just a size 3 micron pen. And I've made cone flowers enough times that I don't feel the need to pre-draw them or sketch them in pencil or anything like that. They're pretty simple. 
Drawing is really just about shapes. And once you get used to the shapes that you need to draw, you don't need to, you know, look at reference photos or anything like that anymore. Coneflowers are really one of my favorite things to draw. Just because the shapes are pretty easy and I don't know, I just, I like the way they look. I have coneflowers in my garden. Birds are something else that I really like to draw because in spite of how complicated they look, they really are just a few simple shapes. So it's not too difficult to draw birds. My idea when I started this was to um, put coneflowers in all of the colors that weren't blue because I thought the blue was kind of like the sky. And I didn't want to have, you know, too many coneflowers in the piece. So because I have sections of blue, it breaks up the space in between the flowers. So it's not just a big jumble. I had a hard time right here deciding which direction I wanted my flowers to go in. Ultimately, I decided to have this one facing the one on the opposite page. And then I do have some petals coming in from off the page. I really like this, but of course it's hard to see them because the um, inclines are so thin. So I'm taking a thicker pen, and I think this is one of the brush ink pens. And I'm going over the lines and doing some of them thicker on one side than the other. Just to give them some weight and some definition some shadow. As you can see, it really makes it pop and jump off the page. Now it's starting to look like art. I think it's important to have different weight of lines when you're drawing so everything's not so uniform. It definitely adds interest and impact. So much better. And now I'm going to write my sentiment. And because this gesso was something brand new that I learned about, I decided to write the words new ideas. I love trying out new ideas. It's so much fun to be creative and art is such a great way to be creative. There are no wrong answers in art. Now, sometimes I like to hand letter things and I just add whatever embellishments I feel like adding at the time. I used to work at a library and I would do the front window displays and um, I learned how to do a lot of my lettering by doing those displays, just coming up with new ways to write letters. It was a very small library and I did not have anything better to do. So I'm using some 
yellow. I think it's fossilized amber to go around the edges. And I use my fancy scrapbooking scissors to cut this out, but they're not really sharp enough. So it took me a long time to actually get them cut out, which is why I cut this out of the video, because it took me quite a bit longer than I wanted it to. But look at that, the glue like sticks immediately. It was fantastic. I did, of course, smudge the ink when I was pressing it down, because that's what I do. So I just took an eraser and erased it. It was fresh enough that it came right off. Now here I decided it's great, but it could use a little bit of shine and sparkle. So I got out my paints. These are Jacquard paints. They're metallics. Um, they're really for fabrics, and I've used them with stencils to make t-shirts and things like that. But I also use them in my artwork on paper. They're not the most shiny paints on the market, but you know, it's what I've got and they're, they're pretty decent. And I'm not completely filling in the petals because I don't want to cover up all the marks that are in there. I just want to add a little bit of shine. When I first started doing art for shows and things, I belonged to an art club. And I remember being at an art show and the judge really did not like metallics and glitter and things like that in artwork. Uh, she deemed it unprofessional and so because I was still kind of new at art, I really took that to heart and I did not ever use any you know, anything shiny in my work, and oh my goodness, did I ever miss out. I love putting shiny stuff in my in my work now. I'm so glad I don't follow that rule anymore. And I have entered um, pieces with like glitter and, and metallic paints and stuff into art shows, and they've won awards. So, you know, I think it was just that particular judge. But yeah, I spent a lot of years missing out on putting shiny things in. And this is a bronze. I didn't have anything resembling orange, but bronze, like bronze is a brown and brown is kind of in the orange family. So I thought it would be good enough. I didn't want it real thick in here, but it does add some shine and it just goes with the orange so well. You can't tell it's not. Not that you can't tell it's not orange, but, you know, it, it goes with it. So that's the finished product. The metallic paint isn't the shiniest. You can see it a little bit. It looks a lot shinier in person than on video, but someday I'll find some really good metallic paints. I hope you had fun, and I'll see you next time.